Hi there everybody, welcome to another video. Um, on today's video I have this uh, Mazda MPV uh, or this is also like a Mazda 6. Um, this is a 2007 and basically what's happening it's um, it's overheating and after having had a look at what might be causing this overheating situation um, what I noticed is that the car is not losing any coolant. Uh, however, when it starts overheating a little bit, um, this radiator cap here opens and the fluid starts coming out of here, spraying out. Um, and it loses a bit of coolant. But uh, sometimes it takes a while to overheat so it seems to be running okay no leaks no issues um, but it what seems to be the issue is that the thermostat doesn't seem to be opening um, on time or it's delayed or it's getting stuck or something's happening that is not letting the water go through the radiator properly um, so I'm going to be changing the thermostat in it and the thermostat comes with a housing um, all ready to be installed. Uh, so to get to the thermostat in this particular car, it's a little bit of a, not the worst, but a bit fiddly to get to it because we need to remove the power steering pump, I think it is. And for that, we also need to remove the belt, the fan belt. So on this video, I'll just cover how to remove the the fan belt and then we'll progress on to doing the taking the, the pump out and well not completely out just to moving moving it to one side and that will give us access to the actual thermostat but to do that as well we're going to drain the coolant from underneath so the first thing i'm going to do is just get the car up in the air and um, drain the coolant from underneath Either I think there is a a plug that you can undo and drain the coolant, or or just remove one of the hoses and drain it that way. Um, so in this case, the car is cold because I don't really want to burn myself with coolant. So car is cold, and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get it drained. So looking at the car from underneath here, um, we have uh, this hose is the hose that goes to the uh, I think as far as I can see it goes to the thermostat housing so we could sort of release that hose from here and drain it but I think we have a, a drain plug just here on the radiator um, which is uh, like a 12 mil plug so if we can open that maybe we can drain the coolant from that point um, so make sure you have a something to catch the coolant and obviously also you need to dispose of it properly because uh, it can be toxic to wildlife if you just throw it away anywhere so just make sure you dispose of it in a good way in a good manner Okay, so it's a little bit slow. I don't know how long that would take to drain, but uh, which is why sometimes I prefer to remove a hose, <laughs> although it usually spills everywhere. Um, but anyway, let's let that drain. And the other thing just wanted to have a look from here is the actual uh, tensioner for the belt so the thing is on this car the tensioner is sitting right there and we need to get that tensioner 
released a little bit in order to release the belt. So either we need a, a tool, a long bar, if we do it from the top, we need a long bar to fit the center, that center bolt there, which is it's a 14 mil, or somehow we can do it from down here, but I'm not sure, so I'll just have a quick look and see uh, at the options and uh, we'll tackle that belt as well. So I just removed the wheel here and I'm just going to remove this little panel here a little bit to give me a bit of a uh, better view of the of the belt. So these little clips I spray them with some uh, WD-40 because I know they tend to go a little bit bad and hard to turn. So if you spray them with a bit of WD-40 they will come out a little bit easier and hopefully um, they won't break or go missing. <laughs> Uh, so there is four of those and if you undo the center, the center is like a Phillips screw but the rest of it is just a plastic so just get this here okay. now we have a slight better view here of uh, of this area we have the, the belt here and the tensioner that we want to release is just sitting here okay so this might be a little bit hard to film um, however the tensioner is here and uh, that's where we want to get the 14 mil spanner so just above there you'll be able to see the um, the bolt that we're trying to to get and um, I'm gonna put this other spanner on this one here to give me a little bit of extra leverage so I can push this uh, tension in and in this case uh, we are trying to turn that basically that bolt clockwise so as if we were tightening it and uh, it's a little bit hard to be honest because I already tried it <laughs> but once we get to a certain point the belt will become loosened and you'll be able to remove it. So while I would suggest, obviously while, while you remove the belt, is that you don't try to remove it like with your finger, putting your finger in between the wheel and the belt. Because if for some reason this slips or something happens, then your finger can get caught in between. So just try to fiddle the belt out without getting your fingers caught. Right, so let's give it a go. And I push this. <laughs> Clockwise like so. And try to hold it there. While we take this out. And as I go along, I'm losing a little bit of the, the grip there, but hopefully, hopefully I can get it out. I think there is a special tool for this, by the way, um, that can hold the... Uh, the tension 
uh, off on this uh, belt but I haven't got the tool and that's why it's a little bit harder right there we are okay loosen taking that off and now we can release tensioner and and that's it that's what we need to do really because um i mean you could change the belt if you wanted to if your belt is old but in this case scenario i'm not actually changing the belt i'm just going to um release it because i need to release the uh power steering pump from the top so um i'm also just i think i can just leave this there or really i can remove it but uh that way and another thing is make a note of how the belt goes before you take it out so you have your crankshaft you have the tensioner you have uh, on this side maybe the air conditioning and whatnot just make a little drawing how the belt goes around because it can be very confusing when you try to get this belt back in place and I, I mean I don't mean it just with this belt I mean with any car you tend to it can get confusing how the belt goes back <laughs> so just do a little drawing which is what I'm going to do uh, should have done it before but uh, pretty much just loosen this so I have an idea of what I'm doing so um, I'll make a drawing now while I'm waiting for that coolant to drain as well I'm going to start moving the pump from the top okay I just finished making my little drawing and also I had to although I'm working inside a garage it's kind of raining inside of the garage as well so I just put an umbrella on top of the bonnet here because it was kind of raining exactly here where I need to be working. So I don't want to get wet <clears throat> or catch a cold. Uh, right, so I made a drawing of how the belt goes and uh, I may need to follow my own advice on changing this uh, belt because I think I've seen a little crack on one of the, of the, the ribbed um, areas. So maybe worth uh, changing it now that it that I taken it out so anyway um, now I'm gonna lift this cover up just to give me a little bit more room or more view of the area so that cover just pops out literally and then we have view here of this uh, power steering pump and we need to undo these bolts here and there will be another one just sitting underneath that we need to take out as well so as we already removed the belt we can just uh, lift it off here really um, where is it? here you see just put it to one side for now and hopefully we can remove this pump and uh, also maybe we're gonna disconnect this uh, electrical connection here so just press on the little clip here on the side and that will allow you to take it out so just put it to one side but also don't forget to reconnect it and now we're going to take those out. I'm not sure what size that is. Let's see if, if that is a 12 mil or similar. Yeah, looks like that. Those bolts are 12 mils. Only thing is, I might not be able to get to this one with a socket because this hose or there is a, another hose that goes right on top of there and it won't allow me to put the socket but we can use a spanner and hopefully the bottom one 
yeah I can feel the bottom one there and that will be able to use the socket as well all right let's crack on with this one thing that I should have done um, while I'm draining the coolant is maybe open this cap uh, because it will allow some air to go in the system and I could just hear as soon as I opened that a lot of coolant rushed out <laughs> so open that little cap it will allow air to go in there and also open this cap <laughs> now I'm getting rain on my neck on the other side of the right so let's get this uh, here So I just put a spanner there on that 12 mil and you can use a spanner on a spanner to help you crack open these uh, bolts. There's, they might not be too tight but uh, it makes your life easier. So I'll just put this other spanner on top of this one and get this open like so. Just uh, makes makes it a little bit easier, and hopefully once that is loose, you could get yourself a spanner that has a a ratchet type of system. And that will make things a little bit faster. Okay, so that's my ratchet type of spanner which can make things a little bit faster Okay, so just got that pump out of the way and now have a little bit of a better view of the thermostat down there. And uh, we have three bolts holding that thermostat there. Um, but maybe before I remove it, we may want to release or take out the, the hoses that go into it. So there's one hose there and another one there. And uh, I don't know what this switch is here. Interfering a little bit, but we may have to, uh, sorry, I mean this switch here. We may have to... Um, Try and get this out before removing it so we can, because uh, this might be a little bit stuck on the housing, but uh, I'm sure we can remove them either way, but uh, it might be easier to have the houses off first. So anyway, let's get um, some pliers to get those uh, clamps off. Okay, so just to have a little bit better access, I just, uh, using one of these, I removed, uh, just push this switch out of that place there it's just pressed in really so that will just help with uh, well at least it moves and we can perhaps get the pliers down there in order to 
release these clamps and take them out. Take them out somehow. Well, you just have to press them and slide them out. Easier said than done, of course. But I think, okay, I think that's out. I use one of these pliers or something similar. Um, although this might not be the best. Okay, so in the end I'm using the pliers that I didn't think I was going to use and actually <laughs> the uh, clamp is moving out. Um, the reason is that you may notice that you really need to press it all the way until it's, it closes. So basically closing it properly is actually opening it. So um, now I'm just gonna really need my two hands to pull it back a little bit more. And uh, these pliers actually are, are doing the job. So let's get this out now. Okay, so that hose now is back enough. So we can uh, basically take the hose out so once you get the clamp back enough then you should be able to put uh, push the the actual rubber hose out but although it might be a little bit stuck in there so may want to try and loosen it a little bit before we can take it out So I'm just going to try to avoid damaging the hose. Just get something a little bit under there to try and get it loose. And the other one as well. Once it's a little bit loose, it might actually start coming out. So I think we get the idea. I just need to loosen it around and uh, they will come out. But probably um, I can do it with my two hands here. So let's get those hoses out. Right, so. As soon as I had two hands, this was a lot easier. Um, still hard to pull out, but hose is out. And this other one should pull out as well. Maybe a little bit of coolant comes out. But now we have these hoses out of the way. We can tackle. Oops, okay, there is a bit of <laughs> coolant there. Um, so if you can get your tank under that, then uh, that would be good. But now we can remove those 8mm bolts. So I'll just release those 8mm. And as far as I know, there should be three of them.
So the third one is just sitting. Sort of same area as the one on the right hand side here. These things are easier with uh, two hands. So I think we get the idea again. I'm just gonna go ahead and release those three. Okay, so I've got all three out. Um, just have to remove this one as well. Eight mil bolts. And now we should be able to remove these. Um, we might get a little bit of coolant out of there, so just get your bucket under the area. I'm just gonna get mine as well. Okay, oh, hopefully I got it more or less in position there. So we can take this out. Oh, there's definitely some coolant coming out of there, but here's our thermostat. And um, I'll be getting the new one soon, the next couple of days, so I can uh, replace it. Um, so in order for preparation of the area, uh, you just check the surface where this is sitting. You can see there is a gasket on this so um, I've got my thermostat this is the one I'm using from Gates uh, this was about 45 50 pounds more or less so that might be the part number there <clears throat> just get obviously uh, get the one that you need for your vehicle uh, it, in some models it might be slightly different i think the mazda 3 one is uh this is slightly longer or whatnot but um another thing is also before we fit this don't forget to prepare the area so all i've done is i got some uh, a bit of sand paper or you can use you know emery paper and clean around the area, the surface where this is going to be sitting. Let's get rid of that box. So um, the rubber gasket there is going to be sitting and creating a seal around the surface of that. So just clean around there. Um, you may find it's not that really that bad. Just a quick. Uh, sand down around it should be fine and then clean it with some paper so i am um, kind of already done it but uh, basically we're just going around it a little bit so making sure there's no uh, dirt or anything that can cause a leak sometimes uh, coolant starts building up <coughs> around the area there. So I'm just going to wipe it clean. And that's it. That should be ready so let's get uh, I'm also just going to apply a little bit of uh, grease around this uh, gasket and again and also make sure the gasket is sitting properly all around if it is then that's a good thing and I just have a little bit of like I said multi-purpose grease to go around this gasket and that is going to help the gasket accommodate sort of slide a little bit 
accommodate itself a little bit better than if it didn't have any any um, any grease around it so nothing too crazy just a little bit of that so it helps with the sliding and fitting and that's it so so we are ready to fit our thermostat so i just put a little bit of a wd-40 on these bolts as well um, so they can go in a little bit easier than they would and uh, I'm gonna put them in by hand obviously as much as I can making sure they're going in the correct way and the no thread is getting damaged So that's the last thing we want to do, cross thread the cylinder head there, <laughs> that would be tragic. So just put your bolts in, take your time, these jobs are jobs that you need to do with a lot of patience because of the positions they're in, the angles. Uh, the difficulty of all these things sometimes can make us lose our patience a little bit. Right, so even this getting on the way. So now I'm gonna use my ratchet to get those in. So just remember these are uh, this these bolts are just eight mil bolts. They're they're a bit like like butter. So they would you can you can damage them very easily. So um, once you feel with your ratchet that this is. Uh, gone enough that feels tight then uh, that's as, that's pretty much as much as you need to go you don't need to tighten those bolts any more than that um, they are I, I haven't got the actual figures in new to meters of what they are but they are just eight mil bolts so so it's not gonna be a lot of force Right, so I'm just going to put them in and we'll come back to it. So, I finished tightening all the bolts. And like I said, once you feel they are close, you can turn them a little bit more, maybe an extra, I don't know, an extra few millimeters on your ratchet. So I can't do it with one hand. Um, but you just you really need to be careful you don't break them or you will spend another three hours taking them out again <laughs> um, and worst if, if uh, the actual head gets damaged there so um, let's avoid any problems after all if you do have a small leak from there or anything because you didn't tie them enough then um you could always uh, just uh, remove your pump again and tighten them a little bit. It's safer to do that, even though it lo looks like a, 
long way round, but uh, it's safer not to break the bolts. Um, so now we can move on to refitting our pipes. Um, I think from here on it's just a, a matter of refitting everything back. Um, so I may just get on with it and not really talk too much. So let's start this refitting process. Okay, now all of this is back in place, it's time to fit our belt. Um, this is the belt I got, I hope it's the right size, because it's quite a long one, the one I removed, really long, I mean. That's the belt there. So quite huge <laughs> and I'm hoping that this is going to be the right one because otherwise I won't be able to finish today and I definitely need to finish today so it does look to be really long as well okay if you've done a drawing this is my drawing here so I've got the power steering AC crankshaft water pump so that's how my belt will go uh, tensioner this is the alternator and this is an idler idling wheel there or pulley idling pulley so that's how my belt is supposed to go so if you made a drawing follow your drawing um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna it's gonna be difficult to film me trying to fit this so I'll just go ahead and do it and I'll see you when I'm releasing the tension and putting the belt although you probably all know already know how to do that okay so I managed to get that belt around a little bit wasn't really um, that easy it was a bit of a fiddle not really terrible but uh, now we need to release the tension again and uh and try to get that belt back in okay so I couldn't film getting this belt back on because it was a nightmare. Uh, now you may be able to see my spanners on the tensioner there and it, you really have to push all the way to release the tension on this. It's, so, it's really hard 
and uh, so you may be able to see here I have to tie band the spanner there after pushing it all the way because I couldn't hold it while trying to put this belt on and even then as I was holding as holding this there and using my two hands trying to fit this belt was not easy so someone came along and gave me a hand um, installing the belt here a little bit while I turn the crankshaft clockwise here and we manage to get the belt in there and so had it not been for the help of someone else I would have been struggling to fit this belt so if there is a special tool for this tensioner that is a long bar and you're able to get that tension properly released I'm not really sure but uh, there must be there must be some kind of tool special tool for this um, anyway managed to do it this way round so if you're struggling cable tie your um, <laughs> if you're on your own cable tie that there make sure that as much tension is off of that and then start fitting your belt here and turn the crankshaft clockwise while you push the belt holding it in place and it will go in but um, there we are well that's a struggle so now I have to release that so I'm gonna cut the tie bands there and I'm gonna fit the little cover that goes here fit my wheel and also mustn't forget to fit this this goes on the radiator so you need to close that as well because the next part of this job will be to put the coolant in there so don't forget to close your radiator um, so having said that I'm gonna do all of that and then move to the top okay we're here now um, belt is on all the nuts the bolts are tight and the little plug at the bottom is on so now we need to start filling this up with some coolant don't really need to have that um, on the side but uh, to check for leaks or anything uh, may have that cover off now the coolant I'm using for this car is this green coolant that uh, is made for this vehicle um, so what they say is you can find the coolant that you need by looking at this cup if it says uh, FL22 it says there um, and I think you have that green mark there as well for the coolant that you need so if you look at that and you you'll be able to find the coolant that you want now this is concentrated so I already mixed it here and so that's what I'm going to do next really I'm just going to fill up this uh, tank with coolant and I'm also going to fill up the radiator with coolant um, just so I can get it to at the top so because I think quite a bit of coolant came out actually some possibly eight liters or so um, now the manual on this car is in Japanese so I wouldn't I can't really read it but we're gonna have to get the car running put the coolant in get the car running get the heating going inside of the car make sure everything is running wait for the fan to come on so the coolant can go all around and then that's what we're going to need to do in order to put the correct amount of coolant and also make sure that the car is it's got no air bubbles and that's why we want to make sure we have a hot air inside so it's going to be take a little while right so i'm just going to put the coolant in there so all the five liters i had in there went in it, they went in this container and 
the radiator. I haven't really filled it up yet, but um, I'm gonna get the car going so some of that coolant can start getting into the system. And I'm gonna go and mix the rest of the coolant that's there. get this car started but <laughs> right I'm just gonna get it started and make sure you have the heating on full here and you got your blower there because we're gonna have to run this until we get hot air inside so I'm just gonna go and prepare my coolant and we'll carry on topping this up a little bit okay so while the engine is uh, running it's just topping up uh, the coolant here have to be do it a bit slowly because uh, if you do do it too fast it starts this is what happens but uh, although I think I may have just about put enough in there so so far I put um, five liters plus maybe two and a half liters gone in there so in a minute I'm just gonna close that off but also in the few minutes i had the car running this is already this feels the air coming out here is already a little bit warm uh, but obviously the car the car's temperature is going up a little bit um and obviously we want we want to keep running the car to be honest we want to keep running the car until we get hot air coming out of here and until until our radiator fan comes on because that's how we're going to know there is that the um, the system is bleeding itself basically so that can take a little while, in all truth. So I'm just gonna close that now. Whatever um, extra coolant in there will just overflow onto the expansion tank here. But uh, we will notice that once we once the the fan comes on in, in the for the radiator the coolant will probably drop down a bit so it's a long process it shouldn't be that long really but uh, it just takes a little while to um, bleed the system and always we want to be monitoring the temperature there because if this starts overheating here um, you want to be careful you want to switch the car off because uh, there's a, there's a lot of air in the in the engine so so that's why we need to monitor the temperature constantly So I'm just revving it in order to get that uh, water pump going, get that coolant moving. You might see that temperature gauge fluctuating there a little bit. So it was going up a little bit, but now it's coming down. A little bit and that's because the coolant is probably getting to the temperature sensor and whatnot moving around the engine basically 
and the air in here is getting nice and warm now. I can feel it nice and warm. And today is quite cold, so it's nice to get some hot air. And so, so like I said, I'm just gonna wait for the coolant for the fan to come on. Once the fan is on, um, let the car run a little bit. Obviously, monitor the temperature gauge here, make sure it's not overheating. Um, but we have to wait until the thermostat opens to let the coolant through to the radiator and the fan to come on. Um, and then you can switch off the car once the fan is come on then it's cycle let the car idle for a few minutes check your temperature here make sure you have hot air coming here and then um, switch the car off and see where your coolant is on your expansion tank and also sometimes or many times if you leave the car sitting overnight you may find that the coolant on your expansion tank goes down a little bit so just top it up to the to the max And at the same time, while all of this is going on, just uh, go, go ahead and check that you haven't got any coolant leaking from your thermostat. So I can just about see the thermostat. And I can see can't see anything leaking from below that thermostat housing there also if you ever put your hand down there just be careful because you have the fan right here and you have the belt right on the left hand side so if you ever want to check something the hoses make sure you're very very careful when you put your hand down Otherwise, so this expansion tank has the, the the low mark here and the full mark just there. At the moment, I'm up here, but I'm estimating that this will go down. Anyway, I'm gonna wait until the fan comes on and then come back to it. Okay, so I'm just trying to get the fan to come on and uh, temperature at the moment is 104 degrees and I think it comes on somewhere around that that area so I got that pressing the accelerator to get it hot and it seems like it may have come on because now it's coming down so let's have a look at that So I have to check it again. So right now we're at 101. So let's try that again. But the temperature is not going up. Um, I think it's remaining right there in the sort of in the middle a little bit below than the middle this is saying 103 so those fans have to come on all right so fans are on now
so this is not going up so before what was happening before this temperature was getting up to 107 okay so as soon as it goes below 100 or so uh, or 100 or 101 this stops the fans stop but it doesn't let it get to that so before what was happening this was getting to 107 and the fan was coming on and as the fan was coming on this was remaining at that temperature it was it was not going down which means what was happening probably is the thermostat wasn't opening and it wasn't letting the coolant through the radiator um, but now the difference is when this reaches 104, 105, those fans come on and immediately this starts going down. Or even it might, it might reach 106, that might be the actual um, temperature for the, the fans to come on, but then they come on and it quickly cools down. So, and also, uh, there is no air bubbles in the system. I have really hot air coming inside the car. Um, my coolant at the moment is up to here. It should really be uh, down here. So I, I'm gonna need to remove a little bit of coolant out of here so it can go uh, down to the full mark. But it's just that yesterday when I was uh, popping it up, I topped up a little bit too much here. Uh, it's not a problem really. But uh, sometimes, obviously, current can, can expand when the uh, car is hot. And then it might come out of here. Having said that, I never really see that happening on one of these. Um, so, really, um, I'll just uh, go ahead and remove that. But uh, with this car, you can top up your coolant here and here, and you're pretty much safe once you run the, the system and whatnot. But um, all the cars are really harder to bleed to get all the air out of the system. I'm not sure why some cars are harder than, than others. But um, nevertheless, I think this will conclude my video on changing that thermostat. So, having said that, hope the video helps, don't forget to subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.